Good afternoon, guys. It's Danny from the Wrestling Newspaper FM podcast. Very quick one, just to let you know what our plans are for today. I am off to see uh, an evening with Jimmy Havoc. It's being presented by TNT Extreme Wrestling, based here in Liverpool. We are off to Fusion Nightclub, where the event's happening. It's also going to feature Drew Parker, Jack Jester and Mikey Whiplash. I have got the, thanks to Jay, um, who is the promoter, I have got the Extreme VIP tickets. So we're going to go and meet Jimmy Havoc, get our picture taken with him, uh, get early entry and queue jump, which is always good. Um, the last time I met Jimmy Havoc and had my picture taken with him was in a bar called Razoo's in New Orleans after WrestleMania 34. It was a very drunken night. Um, I may have made a pass at Shayna Baszler in a very joking way, obviously. Um, also, dropped my phone a few times before I got my picture taken with Jimmy Havoc. Um, called Big Cass Lofty a couple of times. He didn't like that. Um, and also, I think I really annoyed Trent Seven as well because of my drunken state. So we're going there. Uh, hopefully, I have a few German beers before. Let's hope we don't have a repeat of what happened at Razoo's. And then we will maybe go in to the crazy house afterwards, or what used to be the crazy house, which is the electric warehouse. And we'll see if we've got the stamina for that. Catch up with you all later. Cheers, guys. can hear me we are in Einstein's that's my big stein bear in mind I've got big hands but that's a big stein of German lager a little look at the menu I do fancy that Einstein burger to be honest with you I uh, hope you can hear me um, I'm gonna head over I can just look out there that's Constant Square everyone out in the sun enjoying themselves after these horrible rainstorms have gone I'm be about to enjoy myself before we go over to see Jimmy Havoc. There's a live band starting now, so I better stop. Hi guys, it's uh, Danny here from the Wrestling Newspaper uh, FM podcast. Just uh, returned home after going to an evening with Jimmy Havoc and friends. Friends being Drew Parker... Jack Jester, um, Mikey Whiplash, and also a surprise um, of Primate, which was good to see. Really good night, a fusion nightclub put on by TNT Extreme Wrestling. Um, the promoter there, Jay, makes everyone welcome, makes time to go out and speak to him. Really, really good night. Fantastic seats wherever you sat. Um it's like you were sat in on four friends talking about wrestling. It was a, a very good experience, especially for the price. It was £20, and that was for an extreme VIP, where you got to meet the guys, you got pictures taken with them, you've also got um, a signed poster. Really, really good night. I enjoyed it I, very much. Some of the stories they told were hilarious. They were funny, they were themselves, they were... Talking about some of the stories about Cebu were absolutely fantastic. They talked without fear of reprisal from any wrestling company, which was really, really good. Obviously, Jimmy Havoc is on his way over to AEW and is relocating to the United States. So this is kind of his goodbye to somebody we've seen in Britress over the years. And really, really nice guys. Very nice to meet. I had a laugh with them. I, I can't complain. I got more than my money's worth from this show. Um, I would recommend anyone go and see TNT Wrestling. Um, over the last couple of months, they've had Jordan Devlin, Pentagon, Walter, and uh, El Phantasmo. Um, so many, so many big superstars. Will Ospreay. The, the Pete Dunn. I think I've been to a match at TNT where Pete Dunne was the WWE UK champion and at the time 
Will Ospreay was the New Japan um, IWGP Junior Heavyweight Champion in Liverpool at a, a small show. It was fantastic. They always sell out. Thank you very much to Jay for the night. I'll report in a bit more depth now, but it's like one half past one in the morning. So probably not the most sober opinion you'll hear, but I'll give you a full review tomorrow as part of the vlog. Thanks. <laughs>
um, five to ten minutes, should we say. I went and got a pint. I caught up with Matt, or M M Matthew, who, uh, from over the water, he was at WrestleMania, sharing a few stories from the, from our experience there, because we only really saw each other on the bus to the MetLife Stadium. So it was good to catch up and get his perspective. Um, he actually is one of the only people that did the kind of agrees with me that ROH wasn't the fucking mess that everyone believes it was as part of the G1 Supercard. That's for a different day and surely an argument with uh, Daniel on the next podcast or whenever he feels the need to bring it up. We went into the auditorium which was set up, it was curtained off and they had two big screens up and chairs set up on a stage and the audience chairs were there. I'd say there's about six, 60 people here. It was an intimate venue. It was set up for 60. Um, it didn't... It, it came across well. Uh, as I've said previously, I don't want to go into too much of the content because it, it, it's well worth... If it's, if they're putting it on the VOD service or if they're distributing, distributing it as a DVD, it's well worth having a look at. But we got in... Um, we had <laughs> uh, primates also turned up. He became one of the, he was a surprise, became one of the the panel, and they had a fuck marry kill session between themselves. Uh, everyone seemed to want to kill poor Mikey Whiplash. Uh, I think he got a bit of a complex about it at the end of it, <laughs> but it was again nicely done went on and started talking about wrestlers who they faced in the career. One of the stories was about Sabu and they all realised on stage that whenever they fought Sabu that he used to hide something down his boot and not tell them and just pull it out laughing. They apparently pulled scissors, put scissors down Jimmy when he was facing Jimmy Havoc at uh, the end of a chair leg um, and all sorts of stuff. So... It was quite funny. Some of the stories they told about him and how he can't really see very well um, all the time. And a lot of the time asked to ask, where's the table? So we can go through it. Um, that was good. They moved on to another segment. And obviously one of the questions, or the standard questions the wrestling fans ask was, who are your influencers? And what was really interesting was that both Jester whiplash and then concurred with by Jimmy Havoc brought up a guy that I didn't expect to hear, a guy called Drew McDonald who was a stalwart on the British wrestling scene from mid mid to late well mid mid eighties, maybe a little bit later than that, um to I, I can remember him as far back as ten years ago. Maybe a maybe a little bit longer. And it was uh, Drew McDonald. Uh, Drew McDonald started, um, I think he started for, ended up getting for the most of his, the mid 80s was with Joint Promotions, which was at the time the biggest wrestling company in Britain. Uh, he was on TV. Is he was he was a, he was legitimately a Scots Guardsman, and I think he was in this, whether he was in the same regiment or he met up with Dave Taylor whilst he was a guardsman he was obviously like a very very rough well not rough but a very tough man to be in the scots guards and he, he was mentioned by all of them in in such reverence it, it was really nice to hear it, it was a name you were as i say you wouldn't expect to hear but he's been on the scene for a long long time um i think he also he also the the british scene had relations with Canada, Stampede and in Japan as well. So the transfer talent. I think it was mentioned he he'd have to, actually had a run with Chris Benoit and Stampede, which I never knew I never knew about. So the guys uh, guys finished up, it was uh, a few more drinks and then on to the after party. 
but an incredible night for twen for twenty pounds. Poster signing, a good night hearing stories you wouldn't expect to have heard, and I think I said last night stories without they were telling stories without worry of reprisal, which was good because they were honest. They were they were honest and open about things. There was nothing that was overly controversial that came out in the in the chat, but the, you, you felt like they weren't holding anything back at the same time. So yeah, definitely very very enjoyable night. Um, I would love to go again if uh, if TNT was going to put on any similar events like this. Um, TNT have a training school, so they have like a developmental show, which I believe is next week, maybe next Thursday. I'm going to try and get to that because they do so much for the fans there. They really make you feel welcome. From the moment you walk in and the promoter's there asking you how you are and genuinely welcoming you, it's a very good little promotion. As I say, they normally sell out in Liverpool. Um, but So they put good, good shows on. I mentioned a couple of the names uh, that have been there last night. Um, I'm... Failed to mention a load, obviously. Um, David Starr was another guy that's been there. There's been so many that have gone through that that are now in WWE or that are now elsewhere. Mark Haskins um, in, in Ring of Honor. Really, really big names um, that, that come to a promotion that maybe runs once every six weeks to two months. But you can tell why. It's a fun time. The wrestlers seem to enjoy it as well. So I'll definitely be making sure I attend more TNT shows. Um, unfortunately, circumstances have worked against me in the past. Such as I've been working or I've been at other shows and doing doing something else, tying up my time. But I'm really going to make an effort to go uh, a lot more. So again, really good night. If you can catch it on VOD if it is released, please do so. Keep an eye out for TNT. I think it's their Twitter is at TNT Extreme Res. Um, but if you give them a little Google search or have a look on Facebook, you'll see all the links. Really good time. Um, two fantastic wrestling shows I've been to within a week. Um, and I look forward to the next one. Cheers.